I trained a multilingual text-to-speech model that can speak multiple different languages. So in this case, it's Japanese, English, and Vietnamese. However, I ran into a couple of difficulties in training it initially and want to go over that in today's video. So let's jump into some samples to illustrate what I mean. This is the initial model that I trained and this is the one with issues. So I'm going to inference on some English samples. I don't think I'll show the other languages as English is the predominantly watched language of this uh, of my channel. So I'm going to generate a sample with this and we'll go ahead and take a listen to it. But the that's what she killed out and healed itself in grass. The testy crop sprang up and Okay, so what happened there? There's a lot of broken English, and despite me training it on a lot of English samples, um, there is an issue with tokenization, and so I'm going to go over that real quick. Uh, but before that, I'm going to show the model that I trained after that fixed this issue. So it's currently still training right now, but I'll be able to illustrate the point with this next model. And so I'm generating audio here, and I've actually added an English token right here. Um, and this is a special token that tells the model that we're inferencing on English and that we want English to come out of the, um, the output. So by doing this, it allows the model to differentiate between languages. Um, and let's take a listen to this one. Uh, the dawn shone clean and green and clear. The scorched ground veiled itself in grass. The thirsty crop sprang up anew. There you go. You can tell that one is a much more comprehensible. And if I just regenerate one, I'm going to generate till I find a good sample. All right. So the next generation actually turned out pretty well. So let's listen to it. The dawn shone clean and green and clear. The scorched ground veiled itself in grass. The thirsty crop sprang up anew. And there you can tell that is much better than what we heard in that first initial model. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why that's the case. So with that, we're going to have to jump into the tokenizer to kind of understand how this is working. Well, actually, I got to go over the train text file first. Basically, what this file does is it tells the model where to find it. So it has the uh, the Windows path to the audio file, and then it's got the transcription for that audio file. Now, if we take a look here, we have English. So these are the Latin characters that we normally see in English. And then if I scroll down to uh, Vietnamese, which is down here, you can also see there is a mixture of some of those Latin characters in Vietnamese, along with some accents in here. So it you can tell that it is different. However, What's happening is because there is that mixture of Latin characters in Vietnamese um, that overlap with those in English, it ends up learning Vietnamese and English sounds for those same characters. So I want to hop into the tokenizer here. And so what the tokenizer does is in order for the model to actually learn, it has to take these sentences and convert them into, let's say, numbers. And each of these numbers has a specific sound associated with them that the model learns over training a bunch of um, samples. So if we take a look at this tokenizer, the, think of it as kind of like a translator for the model to learn how sentences sound. Um, we've got a bunch of um, we will, we've got the symbols on the left here, and then we've got the number on the right. So in this case, G is attached to the token number 30. And since the model can't actually differentiate what the difference between a G um, in English might sound compared to a G in Vietnamese, they're both attached to the same token. And if we go down, um, and through it, you know, we can see that there are Vietnamese tokens in here that have the accent marks on here, but there's nothing telling the model how to differentiate between uh, the languages. And so this is what I trained on initially, which is why when you hear that initial model sample, but the, you go and show well. the English is kind of there, but it's also not there because um, it's can't differentiate between the characters from Vietnamese and then the characters in English. So to resolve that, what I did in the second round of training was I added special tokens. And so these tokens are language tokens, in this case, um, English, uh, VI for Vietnamese, and then JA for Japanese. And so to confirm that this is the case, the Japanese sounds pretty consistent between both models um, where I don't have to add this Japanese tag before the sentence 
So let me show that real quick. And the reason I don't have to add that language tag is because there's no overlapping characters between Japanese and English slash Vietnamese. So in essence, the model is learning Japanese without any influence from other languages. So um, let's take a listen to this sentence right here. Um, I put it in Romaji down here and we'll take a listen to the audio sample. And this one is without the language tag in the beginning. And this is the second round of training. <laughs> So not perfect, but definitely much better. Um, and then I'm going to go to the first model that I trained, the one that could not inference correctly on English. And we'll generate with that in Japanese. So a little bit faster, but definitely still comprehensible, unlike what English was earlier. So to me, this kind of proved that the tokenizer was at fault here because of those overlapping characters between English and Vietnamese. And so if we hop back into um, the train um, audio, well, what these are called are text audio pairs. What I ended up doing was classifying each sentence and labeling it with a language tag. In this case, for all English, I did um, these uh, square brackets and inside it's English. And then for Japanese, I did the same thing. And then for Vietnamese, um, I also added the Vietnamese token tag. And you can see that those exist inside of this new tokenizer that I built. Um, this one, um, I especially put those in there, like I said earlier. And you can see that in the vocabulary down here, we now have three unique tokens for languages. And so the reason this works is because the autoregressive model is trying to learn what comes next in the sequence. And by sequence, you can think of it as sentence. So what comes next in this sentence from Vietnamese? Oh, well, audio that is Vietnamese and the sentence structure for Vietnamese comes next after this VI tag. Same thing with English. After this English tag, um, the related audio sounds English and it has all the characteristics of English. And because the autoregressive model is just trying to predict the sequence, the next best token for the sequence, and this token now consists of the audio related to the words that are in the sentence that you're feeding, you're more likely to get a very comprehensible output if you add these tags to the beginning. And so this is what I noticed between the two training sessions. And that is pretty big because with this, um, if I go into the multiple language tokenizer, I can also now include a bunch of other different languages. So I could do Spanish, I could do German, I could do French all of these different things that rely on Latin characters and train it in a way so that they don't overlap and should produce uh, comprehensible outputs. And so if we hop back into the web UI here, uh, let me now just generate a sentence for Vietnamese. So let me go ahead and grab a Vietnamese um, sentence. And what I'm going to do is have Vietnamese for the first part of the sample and then English for the second. We should hopefully get Vietnamese in the beginning and then English comprehensible in the second half. No, this is kind of just a special case because it's actually just splitting the two of them in here. So it's not a single generation. This is actually two different generations because of this line delimiter where it's split by new lines, but it'll all be in one audio sample. So now let's take a listen to it. Okay, so there you go. It's um comprehensible, at least for the English side of things. I'm not too sure how Vietnamese sounded. And this is done with a shoddy data set um, with not a lot of data. You know, I think in total, this is around 400 hours combined of all of the uh, different languages. So if we just scaled up and trained on a lot more data, um, I think this could actually turn out 
pretty good. And now that I know this is the case, I do think I can try the attempt that I did earlier by adding new languages to a pre-existing fine tune by just adding additional new tokens and then also just making sure that I have that um, language tag in there. So I'll have to figure out how to actually get the tokenizer to um, to work in that case because I'm going to need to create um, I'm going to add need to add new tokens to the tokenizer and still want to maintain that um, byte pair encoding um, format. So I have to figure out how to do that exactly. But I can now see this as an avenue to train multiple other languages without having to add all of these different languages. So that's what I'm going to try next, actually, for my training. All right. So that is a brief overview of the multilingual model that I trained and how I did it in Tortoise. Um, I think these concepts might apply to other types of autoregressive models as well. So this was very interesting that I um, tried and tested and it, it worked out pretty well. So um, well, that's kind of cool for me to know that you can add special tokens um, for these AR models to um, produce, to differentiate between different languages. So that's going to be it for today's video. Um, if you have any questions on exactly what I did, post some comments down below. And, and if there's enough engagement on any of them, I'll think about possibly following up with a video to talk about it. But for the most part, I think that is um, what I've got right now for multilingual training in Texas speech for tortoise. And it's been pretty exciting because uh, these models you can then fine tune for anything else you want in the future. Say you want to have it train better. Um, say you want to have it for a specific Japanese character. You could do so. Um, and you can maybe add other languages, so on and so forth. So this is kind of just a bridging point for me, at least to understand how Tortoise works to add other um, functionality to it. And I've got some other ideas that I want to try out, but um, yeah, we'll have to, I'll have to think about how, how I want to go about doing, doing some additional testing on Tortoise. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, I'd like to thank all of the members of the channel for supporting and following. And thank you guys for watching the video all the way through if you made it to this point. So I will see you all in a future video.